All right, before we get started here, I want to apologize for the dearth of videos this month. There's only been like three if you include that live stream test from Berkeley Springs. That's for May 15th of 2021. We'll be, hopefully if the weather holds, we'll be live streaming a $100,000 race. That should be fun. But I did have to pull together a live streaming solution because All Out Live is finally coming back too. And we're going to be at Palm Beach International Raceway on June 5th of 2021 and you know all this live streaming stuff has been a good test there's a lot of wireless stuff we've been testing but the really cool thing that you guys might be interested in is if you remember the lithium cells the giant lithium iron phosphate cells that i showed in a previous video those cells are intended to be a car battery for the ltd but i needed a power source and i didn't want to mess with the generator and the gas and everything else so i sort of temporarily repurposed that battery for to power the entire live streaming control room and it actually did that it did a fantastic job it was bolstered by a 120 watt solar panel we pulled over 70 amp hours out of the thing and the thing is still showing 13 volts it's freaking amazing it's incredible i love this battery technology that's out now and also the electric turbo is still very much on the plate. I think now I'm pretty confident we're gonna hit nines with it, that's the goal, but I wanna simplify the startup procedure instead of going through you know, three switches in a particular order, timed and all that. I figured we can automate that whole thing and that's the parts you see right here. And these are two timer modules and this is actually a contactor of the type that is used in a Tesla to connect the batteries and, and disconnect the batteries. It's made by Tyco Electronics. It's a really nice piece and these timers will help trigger this and I figure, hey, if it's good enough for a Tesla, it's good enough for a 750 horsepower capable electric turbo, right? But that's not why you guys are here. You guys are here for how bad is a burnout on your tires and car? That's a good question. And the answer is, of course, it depends, is with everything in the world. It depends how long you do the burnout for, what kind of RPM you're running, what kind of effective mile an hour you're running. But let's start with uh, the burnout that we did at the beginning of our first test video. And let's take a look at that. Before we go out to the garage, check out what actually happened. That rubber that came off those slicks was so hot, it was smoking for so long that in case you didn't catch it at the very end of that video, I did post this clip I shot with my cell phone. This really happened. The heat from the two piles of rubber uh, just grew and grew and grew until there was actual fire. Roll the car back a little bit. That is awesome. I really need to buy new slicks anyway. Like I said, those are, they've been sitting for two years, but they're probably four years old. And now that we've relived it, and of course on this channel we data log everything, so I've got a data log from that burnout too. We're going to look at that as well. But right now, let's go look at the damage that did to the tires. All right, so here we are at the back of the LTD and from Jason's uh, somewhat abusive burnout, you can see he actually managed to get rubber all the way up here. I should probably actually remove it. It's been like a month. Uh, it's just sitting here. It's going to work its way into the paint. But let's take a look. So I've given up a while ago uh, cleaning rubber off the quarters of this thing. This is uh, rubber from the burnout, rubber from a million trips to the track, uh, just little bits of slick for, well, the sake of little bits of slick. So hopefully that gives me a little bit of credibility. I've probably done thousands of burnouts in my lifetime, but let's take a look at the slicks. I'll try to pull up uh, the best shot of the, the surface of the slicks before we completely ruin them by doing a 19 second burnout. But let's take a look at the damage from that 19 second burnout. So here it is. 
you can see there's grooves worn in the tread. If I run my hand on it, it feels very uneven, actually. There's a lot of grooves. Uh, there's still plenty of tread. If you can make out these little dots, what they are is tread life indicators. And when these are worn down, well, you got no more tread. But on a slick, you will wear out the sidewalls, particularly on a heavy car like the LTD. You'll wear out the sidewalls long before you wear out the tread. Even driving on the street, even driving, you know, 150 miles, 200 miles, it's still not going to wear out the tread before you wear out the sidewalls. So these are now ruined, basically. But that's okay because we knew that the sidewalls were wasted anyway. You can tell that the, you know, it was spinning halfway down track and all that happy jazz. Let's go look at the data log. I told you we data log everything. So here's Jason's burnout. Actually, the, the data log is set to trigger automatically above a certain RPM anyway. So I knew it was going to be there. But if we look at the beginning of the burnout, uh, you can see where uh, Jason gives a little bit of throttle. This is first gear. This little section here is just first gear to get the tires spinning. Uh, and you can see that there is a significant restriction. Uh, boost equivalent of negative 2 PSI. But then after he hits this uh, first shift from, from low to high gear, because remember, power glide only two speeds, yeah, it's pretty much a steady cruise. Yeah, it takes a second for the, the converter to catch up. The white line is RPM. And basically, he just stays in it. Now, what's interesting is take a look at the green line. The green line is throttle. So Jason is really good at making perfect burnouts. And the burnouts he was doing you know, for the actual passes were picture perfect, just long enough to clean them up, not long enough to do damage. This did damage. So, and, and we knew it would, so it was no big surprise to us. But uh, if you look at it, we have, once again, the first gear section took very little uh, gas. In fact, down here, he peaks actually at 68% throttle and then kind of lets off because there's basically no load once the tires start spinning. And then when he shifted into high gear, he had to give it a little bit more gas all the way up to 89% uh, percent throttle. And then once it's kind of cruising down here, he's at 75% percent throttle. So there's not a whole lot of load. It's not like a wide open boosted throttle pull. Uh, the total duration of the burnout, I would say it probably started spinning somewhere around here. And he let off at the very end. You can hear like a little blip. This is where he let off the throttle though initially. Uh, so you're looking at, what is that? 18.28 seconds for that section of burnout. But for the most part, he kept it pretty steady. Uh, as we know, the, the electric turbo presents a restriction of about 1 PSI. And that's what we're seeing. Uh, negative 1.1 PSI equivalent. It doesn't take much to do a burnout. But what's really most interesting to me is the RPM. So the RPM here is, you know, he holds it pretty steady. It's only 4,000 RPM. This car can go all day long at 4,000 RPM, especially under no load. It's when you start doing stupid things like bouncing off the rev limiter that you're going to beat up your valve train, potentially cause spring issues, or, you know, worst case scenario, you may pop a retainer and drop a valve and then everything goes haywire. But 4,000 RPM, the car could do this all day long. The nice thing about the way the LTD is geared, even in high gear, that's one to one with 308 gears in the back, the tires are still spinning pretty fast. So when you do the math, this works out that they're 26 by eight and a half inch slicks, uh, which are really closer to 27 inch slicks because it's an outlaw class slick. Uh, so it's a little bit taller. So that means a little bit more mile an hour, but the math works out roughly a hundred miles an hour. So those tires were spinning a hundred miles an hour for about 19 seconds in total which led to destruction and fire. So the moral of this particular story is don't do that unless you're showing off for the camera and you know, you got wasted slicks anyway, what difference does it make? So there you go. This is our data log, fairly clear, fairly simple. That car could have gone all day. The shift point on the LTD, by the way, is uh, 6,000 or 6,200, somewhere in there. It makes peak power at 6,000 RPM. So it's not exactly a high RPM engine. In fact, I'd love to see it closer to 6,500, but this is uh, where I settled on that particular cam. I may cam it up someday in the future. Right now, it's just not necessary though. So in conclusion, as long as you're doing short burnouts to clean off your tires, three to five seconds, ain't no thing, as they say. It's not a big deal. You can do those forever and your tires will last fine. Your car will be okay. Everything will be fine. Even the rear brakes, it's really no different than slowing down after like a 140 mile an hour drag strip pass. 
but it's when you get stupid with it that you're going to cause the damage. As we saw, you're putting a lot of heat into those tires over an extended period of time. In this case, it was 19 seconds was enough to cause literally a fire. It did take about, I don't know, maybe five, 10 minutes for the flames to actually erupt from those piles, which meant they were really hot inside. Uh, but for the most part, we were easy on the valve train and everything else. The moral of the story again is short burnout, okay. Long burnout on your rev limiter, bad long burnout not on your rev limiter but still at fairly high wheel speed bad for your tires it's not great for your brakes either but the brakes will last a long time that's not really an issue so there you have it you know if you got a set of tires you want to waste ship them over here the ltd can do it at 4,000 rpm we'll burn them to the ground it'll be fun there you go so that's how bad or actually not bad as long as you're reasonable about it a burnout is for your car and your tires uh, there's a lot more videos coming up a lot more uh, electric turbo stuff you know this and more testing and all that jazz and also of course you know we've got live streams and all our live and all that so stay tuned click the bell and subscribe well we did get fired but in the best possible way